Hi beautiful Scorpio family, welcome to your May 2020 Tarot and Astrology reading. This is for Sun, Moon and Rising in Scorpio. And wow, <laughs> what, what a month we have astrologically. If you don't mind Scorpio, I'm trying something a little bit different. I have these three dice. They have the planets, they have the signs and they have the numbers 1 to 12 representing the housing system in astrology. Uh, I'm going to roll them to begin the reading to see if there's anything specifically that can apply to you with these dice. Okay, so we have Neptune, we have Gemini, and we have the 11th house. Intriguing. So your 11th house can also represent Virgo because that is your 11th house. There is not much going on astrologically in the sign of Virgo, so I'm taking it as that. Um, Neptune will make aspects with your um, full moon in your sign on the 7th. Quite lovely aspects, actually. And you could be dealing with a Gemini person, but we also have the true node entering Gemini as well as Venus in Gemini, your 8th house, going retrograde. And then on the 20th and the 22nd, we have the sun entering Gemini, followed by the new moon. In Gemini. So Gemini is a very, very particular sign for Scorpio in May 2020. So let's get into that astrology. What is Gemini for you? Well, it's your eighth house. It's the sign that's eighth house, houses away from you. And of course, you are the sign that rules the eighth house. So that means that there's a very deep connection between Scorpio and the sign of Gemini, whether it's with Gemini people, whether it is with the Gemini Sun. It's all very, very much putting you in touch with who you really, really are, particularly with the full moon in Scorpio on the 7th. Now, to have such karmic, romantic, ooh, the tower, karmic and romantic placements such as these, because on the same day that Venus goes retrograde, Mars, your co-ruler, enters Pisces, your romantic sector. As if that couldn't get any stranger, the sun is in Taurus, your partnership sector. And we just had a new moon in Taurus. The tower, the way that you love, the way that you build relationships, the way that you build your finances is all being put under the microscope in many ways. The tower is nothing to be feared. That's Mars. That is Mars entering Pisces for you. That is you saying, if I want something to last, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work first to make sure it's on steady ground. Would you regard the way that you love as steady? Probably not. <clears throat> not in a bad way, but it's not the first word that would come to mind, is it? Even though it's something you're very capable of. Nine of Pentacles and Strength. What you could learn from Leo energy is to be patient. Well, what you could learn from the strength card is to be patient, to be your fixed nature and still be compassionate with people when they act up. To understand that sometimes a toddler that throws a tantrum is because not that they are angry, but because they're very sad. Or to understand that someone who is pushing your buttons, particularly in matters of love, is possibly wanting more so to get your attention than to get your wrath. But a lot of the time, Scorpio, you can just come at people with the wrath at times. But I think, I think more often than not, you have that compassionate, sensitive nature that Pisces possesses. You just go about it differently because I think you're very much still kind of hurting by something else regardless if it's new regardless if it's old I think the the tower the nine of pentacles and the strength is someone whose ego took a real knock somebody who's very very wary of building on false pretenses someone who's very very wary of being wrong possibly again but very wary of being wrong nonetheless We're getting well and truly into retrograde season because your ruler Pluto is already retrograding in your third house. And that makes you a little bit more reluctant about coming forward 
in many ways. And that might be good for an eye. Venus Retrograde wants you to re-examine the way that you see love. It would also like you to know what it is that you want. Because the 8th house is such a secretive house. You have such a secretive nature. And oftentimes, Scorpio, when it all comes out, you can very much be the last to know because you, you buried things so deeply. Mercury enters Gemini on the 11th. And all this Gemini energy wants you to do is learn to see that the deeper, darker energies that lie within you don't actually seem so scary when you shine a light on them, is what I'm trying to say. They don't seem so scary when you verbalize them a little bit. Gemini is very good at getting Scorpio to verbalize things. Yeah, they are. Magician. Gemini. Also Virgo. Your 11th house. So when Mercury... When Mercury makes its mark on you, when Gemini makes its mark on you, you will very much know what it is that you want. You will very much understand where it is that you want to go with a certain connection, particularly if it's new. Where it is that you want to go with your finances, particularly if it's new. Death card. And the Queen of Wands, the Lovers and the Emperor. Interesting, very interesting. Take these as they fall. Ten of Pentacles. You're probably wondering why there seems to be a card missing here. It's because you need to make space. How do you make space? Well, the magician and the death, the relationship between you and the sign of Gemini is very, very strong, even if it's the season. But I think for a lot of you, it is with a person. If it's a Gemini that is has been gone from your life, that you're not with anymore, if it's a past Gemini that there's been a lot of deep thought and consideration about there seems to be, with Venus retrograde, a potential resurgence of that. Whether that's a good idea or a bad idea is context sensitive. I can't tell you that. This is a general horoscope. You know? Use your discernment. What I would take this is as the way that you manifest your consciousness, your connection to the universe, your connection to the divine, the connection to your belief system, be it God, be it um, the universe, be it the law of attraction, be it whatever you call it, whatever you call your spiritual connection with something greater than you. Something that even scientists acknowledge that it's so deep, it's so profound, it resonates so deeply within your soul that when you try and go into love without it, when you try and go into creative passions, when you try and make things happen without that feeling, Scorpio, you don't get the same thing out of it that you crave. You have to be going into whatever it is that you want wholeheartedly expecting to feel a spiritual connection within it. Even if it is a passion project, even if it is something entirely new and something entirely frightening. The thing about the lovers, the queen of wands and the emperor is that 
the love that you look for has to be strong and it has to be stable. And we talked about that at the beginning. You may not certainly describe yourself as stable in some regards, but if that is the case, I think it's getting in touch with that stability within yourself is what will bring out that in your love life, that in your financial life, finding your inner stability. If you have Leo in your chart, you draw upon that. If you have Gemini in your chart, you draw upon their resourcefulness, their versatility, their adaptability, because Gemini knows that they can change. Scorpio thinks they can't. Oftentimes you get stuck in this idea that if it's happened a couple of times and you've been reborn, maybe you're just meant to be reborn all the time in the same way, but you're not. There's versatility in your rebirth because this time you are rebirthing as somebody who is stable, somebody who is loving and somebody who's expressive. Before, Scorpio, you may have been rebirthing yourself as someone who finds gratification, someone who can pep themselves up, someone who finds it in their accomplishments. This time you're doing it in a much more spiritual way. This time you're willing to put in the spiritual. This time you're willing to put your faith in something bigger than you that maybe this thing could work. And certainly it could. Ten of Pentacles and the Six of Cups and Justice. For a lot of you, there is stability in a legal contract or a union that could lead to something contractual. You can call it marriage. You can call it a civil partnership. It could be any of those things. Certainly the Six of Cups, the Ten of Pentacles and the Justice card speaks to me of something that feels very comforting something that feels very long lasting, something that feels very stable but naive, which is an odd pairing, but you are becoming quite sentimental in May. After having your buttons pushed so much in airy season, you're becoming very sentimental and you're really understanding that in order to have communication and clarity and love, <laughs> beautiful in order to have those energies you have to be willing to bring yourself forward completely and in order to bring yourself forward completely Scorpio you have to know yourself completely and that's where the Gemini energy comes in and that's where the death card comes in for you the death card is seldom what it means for other people for you with the magician in the death card it is quite simply a spiritual rebirth it is a metaphysical rebirth. It is magic. When I think of the magician in the death card, I think of, you know, Dumbledore. <laughs> um, or Merlin. Being able to transform themselves, not for tricks, but for adaptability. You have to adapt to a new connection in your life. You have to adapt to the lack of a connection you once had. But even if it's that, Scorpio, it's, it's leading you to love. When the new moon enters, well, when the new moon occurs in Gemini on the 22nd, that is a potent new moon for you to redefine what you want in intimacy what you want in love what it is that you want from somebody else and I know that it's very love focused and a lot of people in the last reading said they didn't want to hear anything about love and things like that but with the astrology being what it is at the minute that is the main focus when Mars enters Pisces on the 13th and the energy just flows so much better with you than the Mars and Aquarius transit did. You find a way to put your love forward. And it's very, it's very, 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 very easy to get caught up in these feelings in a way. But be patient with yourself because you are going through something deeply personal. 
whereby you're realizing that a lot of the thought process you had towards romance, the thought process that you had towards um, money, the thought process you had towards yourself was actually keeping you confined by your own ego. You know, it's building yourself back up after a heartbreak, which I think many Scorpios experienced, probably that Saturn Pluto conjunction. Um, at the start of the year but it could have been after that of course Mercury was retrograde in Pisces um, but rebuilding yourself back after a heartbreak Scorpio is, isn't to do with telling yourself that you are all these superficial things that you're successful that you're beautiful that you're this that or whatever that you've a lot to offer we, we know that it's actually about realizing that in many cases Scorpio you have to bring in your connection with spirit because that is who you are. And I'm not saying that in a religious sense. I'm just saying that the trust needs to be there in something bigger beyond you and the other person. And it probably sounds a bit woo-woo. Um, it probably sounds a bit complicated in that way. But any Scorpio that goes through any kind of awakening always knows that it's it can feel more painful than woo-woo, but you're doing it for a reason this time. I'm, I'm not saying that you've not done it for a reason before, but you're really, really, really wanting to transform the way that you love and the way that you make your life happen. Ten of Pentacles and the Emperor. If you're dealing with a fire sign, a Sagittarius Leo Aries, it is very fun, very passionate, very exciting, but it's also got a lot of stability to it, a lot of depth, a lot of moral compatibility. Water signs and fire signs, much like water signs and air signs, can always create something quite amazing. In an elemental level, it is, of course, steam. But <laughs> for, you know, being considered that Scorpio as a water sign is always more compatible with water signs and earth signs. It's just not the way of the land. That's just not the way astrology works. The sun sign compatibility is one minuscule point of the map of the heavens between two people when they were born. It's different. But if you are dealing with a fire sign particularly an Aries, particularly a Leo, there is a lot of magic, but a lot of depth. Let's draw you an animal spirit card. Ooh, the gazelle. Very speedy. The gazelle is, I think, a sign for you, Scorpio, that in many cases, romantically speaking, or even in financial thoughts, you've been running away from something or running towards something, and I think you're tired. Yep. Yeah. I think you're tired and I think you're going through a metamorphosis of sorts the dragonfly is the energy that transcends from the water to the sky that comes out of your emotions flying very representative of what you're going to be doing in May going into your emotions going into your waters seeing things understanding things transcending territory that feels very scary and that it's different and yet it's familiar it's very confusing in many ways but it will be so clear it will bring you this clarity that you've not had in a long time and whether it is that you're dealing with a fire sign or you are using your energy like a fire sign 
whatever way you add up the numbers, it all adds up to the lovers. If there is somebody in your life who hurt you very, 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 very deeply, this Venus retrograde energy is asking you to call back your power. It's asking you to cut those cords and release that person. I think for a lot of you it's an air sign. I think for a lot of you it's a Gemini. For some of you it could be a Leo. Well, it could be any sign, of course. Let's not get bogged down by that. But it is very indicative that there was a deep hurt. Possibly even another Scorpio. Where the wounds are still quite raw. And... <laughs> warrior woman and star mother where the wounds were very raw and you have to nurture them you have to nurture yourself you have to heal yourself from this you have to cut that cord and you have to be willing to let that go in order to move forward may is very transformative for your love life scorpio very you're navigating it well already. We've not even got into it, but you're navigating it well. I'm going to draw one more clarifier before we get into the extended part for Scorpio in May 2020. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune. May the odds be forever in your favour. It's very interesting. The wheels are turning. Fate is at play. Nothing is shallow, superficial or trivial, even if it seems that way. Everything seems to have depth. And that's how you like it. So I'm going to get into the Scorpio Extended. It's going to be listed down below. Love you guys very much and I'll see you there, Scorpio.